Hao, I'm Manda, and today I thought we could talk about how you can use plants and flowers to deter insects and pests that we don't want, but also use them to encourage the insects that we do like. And that's called companion planting or beneficial planting. Actually, it's nothing new really, it's really an old tradition that's always been done, plants that work well together. But I think what's happened is we've partly forgotten that because of the use of insecticides, pesticides, herbicides. For example, even as far back as the 16th century, the gardens, often developed by monks and nuns, used, really knew how to use herbs with their very strong, pungent smell to sometimes deter insects they didn't want. And also, of course, they used them for medicinal purposes. For example, lavender was often planted around fruit trees because the insects didn't like the smell of it, the ones that could hurt the tree. For example, woolly aphid. Um, and also, of course, the lovely pollinators, the bees would come to it. And people also thought maybe it helped stop some of the bacterial, fungal things like canker. So following that tradition, I'm going to plant some lavender around our apple tree. Let's go. Okay, so already, you know, I can see some hoverflies on our apple tree. The apple tree fell over a bit in the wind, but it's still beautiful. So, I've already planted two of the lavenders. One here, can you see just there? And one there. And here's another one as well. Yeah, I'm going to plant that. I did think about doing it so you make, I was going to make a circle and plant them there, but actually there's already some lovely flowers and plants here. Also, us gardeners, we usually plant it with odd numbers, three, five, seven. It's just it, because it looks, visually it looks good. And I think there is a mathematical thing in it too. Anyway, so let's get this lavender in and then hopefully that's really going to help keep some of the pests away, but also encourage the bees to pollinate the beneficial. So it's a beneficial and it's a companion plant. So now I'm just going to plant the lavender here. I've already dug the hole. And you can see I'm not going to add any compost to this because lavender's like really dry, dry sandy soil. So I'm going to do like that. And this earth here already has quite a lot of stones and pebbles which will help with the drainage. So we'll put that in like that. And then put the squidgy down. And then, oops, go for that rose. And then I'm just going to heal. It's called healing in like that just to make sure the roots there's no air locks there we are so here I'm going to show you here this these are French marigolds and they're really good companion plants very well known to go with tomatoes again if you sort of rub their leaf they've got a very very strong scent and the aphids really don't like that so that's always been used traditionally and it makes it look pretty as well so that's a very good companion deterrent Here's a tomato and here, here they are. Yeah. I probably could have planted more, but anyway, that's all right. The marigolds are to deter the aphids and the insects we don't like. This one, fennel, it has a lovely, soft, feathery feel to it. And lots of beneficial insects really like, like hoverflies, um, lacewings. They love flying around and sitting on it. And that will encourage them and they can always eat any aphids that are left. Also, of course, it's edible and it's very pretty too. So let's get this planted. Whoops. I watered it earlier because it was so dry, so it's not that easy to plant, but it should be okay. And I've got a bit of earth left here, so put that in. Like that. Okay. There. Done. And this is called winter savoury, and it's really it's a herb that you can use, in, especially with meat, for slow cooking meat. I haven't used it before, and I planted it really because I think it's very pretty. And again, I think the bees, the hoverflies, lots of things will love this. Here, I've planted a chilli for goi, and actually I put a little onion in too, just to see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to give the fennel a bit of water because it's very dry, and I'll water the others later. So, we've looked at using companion planting, beneficial planting, but there's also another group of flowers that you can use and they're called sacrificial flowers. And what they do is they actually attract the aphids. And the idea is that the aphids will, will go 
woolly aphids, whatever it is, mealy bug, will go onto those and keep away from the things that you don't want them on. So they're called sacrificial. And two examples, one is called um, the Cociana sylvestris, which is beautiful. I haven't got one here, so here's a photo of one. And it's really lovely, it's very scented, especially at night. And it's actually part of, it's a tobacco plant. But its stem is very sticky, so the idea is they're attracted to that. But I have got one, which I'm gonna show you now. I'm, I'm gonna plant it for you. So here's an nasturtium, which I'm planting as a kind of sacrificial plant to attract the, especially black fly, they really like it. Um, I'm gonna put it next to, we've, this, is, this is a grape, so I'm gonna put it in here and see how, what happens. It will spread all around here. Take it out and just dig it in. The earth here is quite good, so it's fine. Put that in like that. Put you in. So the good thing about nasturtium too is that it has the, the lovely flowers and the leaves actually are edible and you can put them in salads to brighten up your salad and it's got a kind of peppery taste. So I hope that's of interest and, and helpful to everybody. I mean obviously the kind of plants you might use as companion planting, um, it really depends where you live, what your climate is like and what you grow. Um, but the real thing is I think in a small garden for me is to have biodiversity which means lots of different things and then companion plants plants that like to be together there's one final thing I wanted to show you can I so can we go up this way a while ago I was talking about how when you have bulbs in your pots you can then just plant them in a the garden so the plants that I put there, the chilies and the winter savoury, I've taken bulbs out. So I've just dug a hole and I'm going to put them in. I put them in quite casually. I don't really do it very carefully because I find bulbs just have a way of sorting themselves out. So let's just put these in. Yeah. Literally, I'm going to literally go like this. That. And here's a big, you see, like this. Put them in quite deeply. This is quite nice compost, so I'm going to add a bit here for them just to give them a bit, of a, a bit of a better chance. But they'll all come up next year. And then if, you, if they're in the wrong place, you can always move them. So there we are, put those in. Like that. And then again, I'm just gonna tread you down a bit like that. Make sure you're okay. And I'll give everything a really good water. So, thank you very much. And as I say, I hope it's been um, helpful and interesting for you. I thought next time I might look at poisonous plants, toxic plants, because I think they're very interesting. Thank you very much. Sajin.